Today I'll be going over the newly released Lenovo X1 Carbon Generation 8. For those of you who are looking for significant differences between Gen 7 and Gen 8, you aren't going to find any. The latest Gen 7 units already come with the 10th generation Intel chips, and the 8th Gen Carbon picks up from there. On-chip graphics and RAM options remain the same, chassis dimensions are identical, really the only difference under the hood is that Gen 8 now comes with Wi-Fi 6. The Lenovo website for the Gen 8 mentions a 6-core processor, although it's not a configuration offered at this time, but may be on the way. There's some minor differences on screen option brightness and some teleconference shortcut buttons that I'll point out later. If you order with the 4K display, it comes with a carbon fiber woven top cover. Others will be black. The rest of the housing is magnesium alloy. This is a very light laptop, coming in at 2.4 pounds. It feels great, especially if you're used to bigger Lenovo's. Looking at the left side connectivity, you have Thunderbolt 3 connector and power, a second Thunderbolt 3 connector that's positioned next to the Ethernet extension connector for a docking station, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 connector, an HDMI out, and an audio connector. On the other side, there's a power button, an always-on USB 3.2 Gen 2, fan exhaust, and security lock slot. On the keyboard, there's a fingerprint reader, nice touchpad, speakers on the top, and two more on the bottom, which get surprisingly loud for a laptop. One new thing this year on the Gen 8 is these three telecommunication function buttons for quick calling. Integrated webcam with privacy shutter. There are several displays available, but it's nice to see a very bright 500 nits 4K display offered. Now you can clone the hard drive, but I like to start with a fresh installation of Windows. To do this, you can create a USB installation disk from Microsoft's website. Download the utility and follow the instructions. Since these models only come with a built-in battery, you'll want to make sure that you have disabled it before we open the back. To do this, first make sure to turn off Fast Startup in Windows, then we'll have to go into our BIOS. Press Enter and F1 during boot up. Go over to the Config and down to Power. Scroll down to Disable Built-in Battery and click Enter. Click Yes and the computer will shut down. Now let's open this bad boy up and replace the hard drive with a larger SSD. There are five captive screws on the back panel and there's a lip here so the cover will come off in this direction. Loosen all the screws and gently pry the panel back. It should break free and peel off. I found this to be one of the easiest covers to get on and off. Underneath, you have a 51 watt hour integrated battery that supports rapid charging with a 65 watt adapter. Processor here underneath the heat sink and exhaust fan. Here's the NVMe SSD hard drive that we'll be replacing. Here is an unused WAN slot. All the RAM is actually soldered to the board, so there isn't an option to upgrade it beyond what you've ordered, unfortunately. Some people like to put a second hard drive in the WAN slot. This is a PCIe and not SATA. I believe it needs to be single-sided, so if anyone has success with a secondary storage option here, please let the community know below. To remove the hard drive, you first pull back the Mylar protective covering, loosen the screw, I'll put a link to the screwdriver in the description. Remove the screw and pull the SSD out gently. I'm putting in a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus. You've seen me use these before and the combination of performance and reliability is still hard to beat. Hopefully the 980 Pro will be released soon. This takes advantage of the PCIe 4.0 and should almost double your read-write specs. Put the protective covering back, place the hard drive in at a slight angle, push it in, and put the screw back in. To put the cover back on, start at the front. There's two tabs here. Push it down, snapping it back into place and tighten the screws. Since the battery is disabled, you'll need adapter power to turn on. Also, insert the USB Windows installation utility you created earlier and it will automatically boot from it. Start up the laptop and Windows install screen will come up. Click custom install and you can see the new hard drive here that we just put in. Follow the rest of the instructions to complete. You'll want to download Samsung Magician to help manage your new hard drive. Make sure the latest firmware is installed and you can also benchmark your speeds. Since we installed a fresh copy of Windows, you'll want to download the latest drivers. This can be done on the Lenovo website by clicking support, searching for your model, and click drivers and software. You can choose between manual and automatic update, or you could also install Lenovo Vantage application to monitor for driver updates. The existing hard drive was a Samsung PM981A. Here are the read-write speeds before and after with our new 970 EVO. 
I want to take a bit to talk about power consumption and battery life. The i7 processor has TDP specification of 15 watts, but you can see here it pulls 30 watts and even higher at max load. Alternatively, it barely sips a lot of power and runs very cool when idling with clock speed divided down. Real world battery life was impressive for the weight. I was able to stream 4K Netflix for five and a half hours at 90% brightness. Now, a lot of my videos, you'll see me pair the laptop with a docking station. Because of the use case for this machine, I went with a different option. I'm using the Lenovo P27U-10 4K 27 inch display that conveniently has video, charging, and peripherals all over one USB-C cable. It's essentially a mini docking station straight to the monitor. One limitation is that if you're displaying at 60 Hertz 4K video, the USB ports on the monitor will run at USB 2.0 speeds because of limited bandwidth. That's it. Please feel free to participate in the community discussions below.